Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Big Questions, Small Steps. My name is Amanda and I'm so glad that you could join me today. Today we're going to be talking about a season in the Christian calendar. This season is called Advent and this is a time of preparation before Christmas occurs. So, without further ado, let's get checking it out. So, growing up, a the season of Advent was always that time before Christmas. It typically happened after Thanksgiving and it was the weeks leading up to Christmas. And it was told to me at that time that it was supposed to be a time of preparing your environment and yourself to welcome in Christ, the child. So it's it's interesting to me to do research now because I know a little bit more and I admittedly have some bias, but it's changed the way I view things. I used to love Christmas growing up. Then as I got older, I loved Advent because it was a season of preparation, building to this big day and I loved all the different steps along the way to get ready for Christmas. Now I admittedly am a little bit jaded towards Christmas and and it's and it's ways that are celebrated. It just doesn't quite fit right for me anymore. So, I'm going to try to put that aside for now and just share with you the information that I researched regarding the history of Advent what it is, when it is, why we celebrate, things like that. Okay, let's get started. So Advent was essentially created after Christmas was moved. So earliest records, I'm sorry, earliest records indicate that Jesus was typically, was supposedly born somewhere in the spring or summer, but the Roman leaders moved it to December to align with the pagan traditions of winter solstice and Yule, which is the oldest winter tradition, and it just would be a better fit. And then you had Pope Julius I, who dictated that Christmas was now going to forevermore be on December 25th. That worked out okay for Christians because they had Easter in the spring and then they would have Christmas in the winter. But they wanted to balance it out. So before you have Easter, you have a season of Lent. Before you had Christmas, they needed a season of something. If it was an important thing, they wanted you to prepare yourself in some way. So they invented Advent. They invented the season of Advent. And that was in the fourth century. It was created basically to balance Lent. Okay, so Adventus is actually the Latin word for the Greek translation of Pakosia, which means second coming. Okay, now it, when they were talking about Adventus, they decided it was going to be four weeks long. The first two weeks, we're going to focus on the second coming, the Jesus coming again. And that was the time where you were supposed to forgive sins and hope for a quick second coming and like make repercussions and essentially get your heart right to receive God and receive Jesus. The second two weeks, we were supposed to focus on the hope and the joy of things to come by focusing on Christ in the manger. So that was the difference there. The first two weeks were supposed to be kind of mournful. The second two weeks were supposed to be building anticipation and joy. Now, there was a big rise of Protestant evangelicalism, okay? And in that, they wanted to not focus on the negative stuff so much and focus just on the positive. And I laugh because 
that's absolutely my preference. Um, that's what my experience was in Christianity. I was part of the United Church of Christ for 40 years. And you focus on the things that you want to focus on and you kind of minimize the things that you don't. So when I found that little piece of information out, I was unfortunately not surprised. Yeah, so that's... <clears throat> That's what they do. That was the purpose of Advent, and then they switched it, and now it's more focused on the positive side. So they decided there's four focuses for the different weeks of Advent. They have hope, peace, joy, and love. And then the fifth one, if they call it that, it's um, Christ candle or the Christ light and that's the middle and that's lit on Christmas day. Now, typically when you think of Advent, you tend to think of either an Advent calendar or an Advent wreath. Um, the Advent calendar was actually created by a German named Gerrit Long and it was designed purely to entice children to pay attention and capitalize on discretionary funds within the family. Yeah, so when they decided they were gonna bring Advent into the church, they decided, okay, kids like candy, we're gonna make these Advent calendars and it's kind of, kind of be like a countdown to Christmas, a way to engage them, keep them interested, and it lines their pockets at the same time. Okay, now little did they know when World War II was occurring, the Third Reich, or um, Hitler's army, they decided they were gonna try to take these advent calendars and use them for their good. So they decided they were gonna try to change it from focusing on Christmas and focus on praising the fatherland, which is Germany. Um, they Their hope was to inoculate loyalty into the children they incorporated a woodcutter, soldier, and king. So there are three people, woodcutter, soldier, and king into the nativity story. And they changed the story slightly that the woodcutter, the king, and the soldier were lost in the woods. And they came across this woman and this baby. There was no Joseph. There was nobody else. But they came across the, the, the mother and the baby. And the baby had these wise words for them. So they could acknowledge the fact that Jesus might have said some things. However, he was a baby and he was also very easily discredited. Now, they also took the, um, because Hitler notoriously was not a fan of Jewish people. So they also took that and spun it into the advent calendar and that the mother and the baby didn't get away. Um, they took care of them, took care of them in their advent calendars. Now, after the war, the, the advent calendars continue to be popular. They have now expanded and you have ones that are chocolate. You have stuffed animals. I saw a wine advent calendar for adults. I saw beer advent calendars. I've seen just about every kind of advent calendar is out there. Now, um, they typically don't align with the third right anymore or anything like that, but it is basically a countdown to Christmas, a building in anticipation of that. Um, and that is one way that many people recognize and incorporate advent into their daily lives. I myself never had an advent calendar when I was a child. Um, the most we ever did was in probably the last five, 10 years, when we had hung up our stockings for St. Nick, we would take little strips of paper and for the week of hope, for example, you would put something that you hoped for that person in the coming year, something that you loved about that person to for them to hold on to, something that they did that you that brought you joy, um, or wishing for a joy, and you would place that in their stocking so they would get that along with all the treats from Saint Nick. Um, that's what my family personally did, but we never did advent calendars. 
Now, the other thing that's commonly associated with Advent is an Advent wreath. Pardon me. An Advent wreath actually started in the early 1500s, and it was started by German Lutherans. They created this wreath, and this wreath was created with a lot of symbolism. Um, I'm learning that Protestants in general like to spin just about anything to make it make it feasible, make it workable, make it meaningful. They could take, for example, they have taken Oreos and they can spin that into meaning what it means about God. An apple, what, what the different parts mean and how it relates to you and God. So I, it's not necessarily surprising that they can also do that about a wreath. So the German Lutherans created this wreath, okay? Now, typically it's a circle and a circle has no end. They say that that's very purposeful. It's just like God. He has no beginning, no end, okay? The wreath part is made out of evergreen branches. Evergreen branches, again, are supposed to remind the people that Christ brings new life. And in every church, there is an Advent wreath. This is something that's quintessential for Protestants. There will be an Advent wreath that they will light every week. There'll be a verse that they say, and then they light the certain candles, okay? Um, another part of the Advent wreath is candles. Inside the wreath, there are four candles. Three are purple, sometimes they're blue, and then the other one is pink, and sometimes that one is purple. It depends on the different colors, but typically it's three purple, one pink. The three purple are supposed to remind people of penance, preparation, and sacrifice. Um, and the fourth one, the, the fourth candle is just supposed to highlight that you're halfway done. Now, because the Protestants have kind of changed what that means, each of the different candles have a different meaning now. So one candle is hope, one candle is peace, one candle is joy, one candle is love. And then in the middle of those four, there is a taller candle that is always white, and that is the Christ candle. That one is only lit on Christmas Eve to Christmas Day when Christ is born. And the light, the act of lighting the candles, is supposed to remind people that Christ scatters darkness of light, scatters the darkness of light. He brings light into the world and disperses all the darkness. So that's the purpose behind the Advent wreath. That's something that's very common and customary for churches to have. There are some families who have Advent wreaths. I never had an Advent wreath of my own in my family. Um, I know my sister has an Advent wreath of sorts. She has it out of mason jars that are covered in glitter and she lights one candle every week with her family and that's their tradition. No, no qualms about that. Just, just sharing what she does. Now, it's interesting because the Catholics have a different view on Advent than the Protestants. So the Protestants, remember, they took the four weeks, first two being more reflective and like penance, and the second two being more joyful. The Catholics didn't. They basically said, no, we're we're doing Advent, but it, it's we started at this day because it's the feast of St. Andrew, who was a Glacian cemetery. Um, it actually is in honor of Pope St. Glacian. Glacian. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Um, but he was around in 1496. And it's to honor him. And that's why they start Advent then. And then they'll do the four weeks. Again, they focus more on the two weeks of um, repentance and then the two weeks of joy preparation for Christmas. And that's just what they do. Now, they do readily admit, which is startling to me almost, um, they, re they recognize that despite the sketchy, quote unquote, history surrounding Advent, they do see an importance in the season because it reminds them to focus on what's truly important. And what's truly important to them is Christ. So it's, it's just interesting that Advent came about it's a Protestant thing and how they, they like to twist it. It's just surprising to me. It's something I never realized. Now, in my research, there's also something that people do called a Jesse tree. 
Um, this tends to be more, any denomination can do a Jesse tree. It tends to be more in the Christ and the Catholic side from my research. A Jesse tree basically takes a Christmas tree and binds it with an Advent wreath. Okay, it is in reference to Isaiah 11, 1, and it's named a Jesse tree after King David's father, Jesse. And it's supposed to be a simple tree, encouraged to be homemade. And what you do is you decorate the simple tree. It's typically like sticks that are tied together in the shape of a tree. You decorate them with ornaments that are sometimes like painted rocks with scenes on it. Sometimes it's really an ornament that tell the story of the nativity. So in the weeks that lead up to Christmas, so Advent, they're slowly filling the tree, they're slowly telling the story, and that's the Jesse tree. And it's supposed to focus on being less commercialized and more organic. It's, again, it's just interesting to me. I never had a Jesse tree. I never had an Advent wreath growing up. I never even really had an Advent calendar growing up. Um, but I didn't necessarily fault anybody who did. It was just interesting. As a child, Advent was a time that in the church I was a part of, they did this thing called what's in the box. And it was supposed to be to build our anticipation of Christmas. As a child, I just found it to be torturous. Basically what they would do is they would bring out this present and you could do different things every week and then you could make guesses but they wouldn't tell you if you were right. You just had to make guesses and then when you could finally open it on Christmas Eve, then you found out if you were right or wrong or you got the present. Um, and in that church, the tradition was the first week you could look at it, the second weekend you could just hold it, the third weekend you could shake it, and then the fourth weekend of Advent, that's when you could open it. And that was their tradition. It was called what's in the box. But it was that season of preparation. When I was still in the Christian church, I, I found great meaning in the season of Advent. I liked that there is things to do that you need to prepare yourself for before something good can happen. You need to take onus of your experiences and you need to be aware and appreciative of what you have or you won't fully appreciate it. <clears throat> I liked that. I found I found that to be a very beautiful thing. Now I I don't have a problem with Advent, but Advent leads up to Christmas and I have a problem with Christmas. So I'm a little biased and I I understand that. But I wouldn't change my experiences growing up for the world. So, there you go. That's a little bit more information on Advent and the Jesse tree for you. The more you know, the more we grow. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.